Surfing has truly entered the age where it's controlled by engineers as opposed to only tides or storms. And as much as I love to paddle down at the beach, there is nothing more exciting than being promised 800 plus waves in about an hour. Now we're back with another wave pool technology video. However, rather than just delving into the operational sites that are available right now, we're gonna go into some technology which is yet to come in some future years. And this is gonna consist of technology that's gonna allow you to surf all sorts of fun waves, all the way through to some interesting sustainability initiative that some of these parks are committed to. Now, in my previous video, we touched on how different existing wave pool technologies work and why they produce the waves that they do. With that being said, we're gonna go into our first technology of the day, which is known as the Wave Prism. This manufacturer in North Carolina claims to be able to produce the largest mechanical-based waves. It's a modular system that displaces water with these hinged diagonal modules. What basically happens is each cube sucks water in, followed by firing it back out like a controlled ocean punch. Once you stack these modules together, they become one powerful wave engine. The inventors of these referred to it as a kaleidoscope of pressure. And that's where you get this kaleidoscope action where each one is, is pushing from a far corner all towards one center point. All three form one wave machine. Wave Prism argues that this short circuits the usual physics problem where doubling the wave height normally needs eight times the amount of energy and 20 foot water depth. And this particular wave generator claims to be able to produce overhead surf in much more shallower pools whilst using 25 to 50% less power than other sites that it's comparable to. And whilst this technology has not been deployed yet, it will be very amazing to see engineers being able to boost wave displacement without the need to significantly boost energy, which means more waves, shorter pools and lower costs, enabling the ability to drop wave pools in a myriad of locations. Now, this next one I must say is probably one of the most eco-friendly surf related projects that I've ever come across. Meet the Okahina Wave based in Bordeaux, who give us a whole nother perspective on wave pools. Instead of filling large concrete chambers with millions of litres of water, it utilises a circular atoll shaped platform, which is tethered gently to a lake floor. Its mechanism of creating waves is using hydrofoils that push water towards the centre of the ring where it meets a spiral reef, stands up and then breaks. The spiral reef offers an ingenious bit of innovation by keeping the current balanced so the ride can keep looping again and again. On large builds, this would mean up to 30 second rides on both the left or the right with faces from 0.6 to 2 meters high, which is also 2 to 6 feet. This will be deployed for its real world reveal at Futuroscope, a futuristic theme park in France that uses three rotating foils circling a 36 meter atoll. And to add, it'll only use about 35 kilowatts of power which the surf park claims is roughly about the draw of a single electric car. And what's even more beautiful about this is its touch to biodiversity and sustainability. By sitting on top of an existing water body, not only can it be installed or removed in weeks without disturbing the ecosystem, but it actually oxygenates the water, causing an improvement in biodiversity, attracting fish and mollusks while filtering out cyanobacteria. The inventor, Laurent Hakwili, refers to it as a semi-natural wave meaning there's an aspect of both technology and restoration. The claim is that the pool would emit 25 to 500 times less CO2 equivalent than other surf pools, becoming a groundbreaking front for sustainable wave pools. The long-term plan is to deploy dozens of these at multiple different surfing locations, from Paris to Libourne to the Olympic site at Verstorki, each designed to bring surf culture inland with restaurants, music, and local biodiversity projects. This isn't just another wave pool. It's the moment where engineers and environmentalists get together to bring the soul of the ocean to life. Now this next one, I'm actually very excited to speak about, but not for a reason that you might expect. If you recall in my previous video, we discussed how the Wave Garden Cove technology worked. Well, I'm gonna bring it back to Wave Garden, but turn up the heat on this topic with what they're planning over in New Zealand. Over in Auckland, developers at Aventur are building the country's first 56 module Wave Garden Cove Lagoon, and here's where things get wild. The pool will sit right beside a data center run by Spark New Zealand where every megawatt of computing power inside the building will generate a set amount of waste heat. However, instead of this completely going to waste, they're sending that warmth straight into the lagoon through a loose loop heat exchanger system. And now of course, the hotter the servers run out, the more warmth we could theoretically pump into the wave pool. So in reality, the recycled heat will keep the lagoon hovering around 18 to 19 degrees year round, 
turning Auckland's cool mornings into barley-like dawn sessions. And this is not even the crux of it. You see, this will sit adjacent to a 7 hectare solar farm, feeding renewable electricity both to the data center and to the surf lagoon itself, a closed energy loop that the engineers like to refer to as a virtuous cycle. The wider 43 hectare site will include eco cabins, a farm to table restaurant, cycling trails, and even a residential community wrapped around the waves. But to be real, here's the problem that they're really solving. To stop people like you and I from getting in the water and saying, Yeah, these waves are good, but I can't feel my feet. But now, let's put this back into perspective for a second. The increase of demand in data centers around the world could in fact be the reason that you could be surfing in even warmer wave pools. Now, this next one, I'm gonna start by touching on a certain innovator that goes by the name of Greg Weber. Now, this surfboard shaper who's done work all around the world actually had a vision to move the entire wave pool machine itself. Now, what was his concept? It was a loop steel track circling an island, each carrying wheeled carriages beneath the surface, each carriage holds a boat style hull that slices through water to generate waves similar to a wake behind a boat, but precisely shaped and controllable. Think of it as a surfing monorail, such as electric motors driving each carriage, whilst hydraulic actuators tweak the hull depth and angle it in real time. Software then adjusts the speed, draft and tilting thus sculpting everything from your beginner peelers to six foot barrels. Now, early models predict 25 second rides with up to 180 waves per hour, which for a continuously generating wave does sound like a dream. What's even more fascinating is the way that Greg treats the lagoon like a living flow system. His patented current control jets offset turbulence between wave sets allowing the water to settle faster and each wave staying glassy. The design went through six scale model tests with the Australian Maritime College and Delft University of Technology proving that the CFD simulations match physical river experiments. Weber even provided a Kelvin wave formation where the trough forms through the crest. This produces a hollower, more open barrel than the Sullivan type wave that you would see at Wave Garden or even Kelly Slater's pool. You can almost see through both of them. Now look, it's a rideable wave. The actual eye of the tube is fine. Uh, it, the tube is up high and they can be very high on, on very sloped uh, waves. But um, that's the preferable version where you actually have the energy drop, sorry, the wave curve dropping down and it ends up being, there's a flow of water going back towards this wave as it, as it drains it down at the bottom. Beyond the pool, Greg's also working on different structures known as V reefs or V walls. Now, we won't delve into it in this video, but effectively what they are is solar power barriers that reflect waves, protect coastlines, and even host artificial habitats. Because believe it or not, as engineers, even though we can make some really cool and exciting things, we still do have a duty to do these sort of things like marine protection, efficient energy production, and of course, footprint reduction. But what I found particularly interesting is the one question that all of these wave pools answer in common, and that's that how far can human creativity go before nature blinks first? And that's why if you watch my last video on wave pools, you would have noticed that I threw the term engineering marvel around because as brilliant and marvelous as these technologies are that are allowing us to get out there and learn to surf and also practice different skills, I still believe that we can never fully replace the wonders of the ocean and the joy of being out there in nature. Now, we would actually love to bring you some more surf tech related content and what can make it a lot easier is if you hit that subscribe and notifications button as you don't realize by you making that single difference, you can actually help us go a long way with this. So whether you're an engineer, a surfer, or just someone who loves watching imagination come to life, remember that it's all of these people combined that allow our dreams to come real. And what's even more exciting as you never know, a wave you could be riding one day is one that you've designed.